is Acts 2.38 teaching us that water baptism is a requirement for the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit? This is our topic for today. Acts 2.38 says, Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent and be baptized. This verse is often used to prove that water baptism is a requirement for forgiveness of sins. But when Peter said, repent and be baptized, he did not mean that baptism must be added to repentance in order to receive forgiveness and the gift of the Holy Spirit. But Peter wanted the repentant to publicly demonstrate through baptism that they believe in Jesus, that he is the Christ, and that they belong to him. Acts 2.38 does not suggest a detailed order of receiving that gift of forgiveness, gift of salvation, and gift of the Holy Spirit. Because if you read in Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 48, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. In this verse, they have not yet participated in water baptism. 45, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that this should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, or in the name of Jesus, and then pray they him to tarry certain days. Now, if you study the order of the event, first, Peter was preaching in verse 44a. And of course, the people listened to his preaching and believed on his message. And miraculously, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them. It means the Holy Spirit or the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to them. And they spoke in tongues and they magnified God. And then, what Peter said? Because these people receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we must baptize them with water in verse 47 and 48. So this is the order. In Acts chapter 10, there is a message. The people listened. The people believe. Then the Holy Spirit came to them. They received the Holy Spirit. Then the people spoke in tongues and magnified the Lord. Then at last, Peter commanded these people to be baptized. Remember, the Peter who preached in Acts chapter 2 is the same Peter who preached in Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, when people believe the truth, they instantly receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, despite that they have not yet participated in water baptism. That means water baptism is not necessary in receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit and of course the gift of forgiveness. Why? Because water baptism cannot cleanse us from our sins. Remember, only the blood of Christ is able to cleanse us from our sins. Moreover, if baptism was instituted by Christ for the cleansing of our sins, why Jesus commanded John the Baptist to baptize him with water in Matthew chapter 13, verse 13 down to verse 17? Did Jesus need cleansing from sin? No. Jesus is perfect. He does not need a cleansing. He was baptized. You know what? He was baptized with water to fulfill all righteousness, but not to cleanse the unrighteousnesses in him, for he is perfect. So baptism is not for cleansing. To further the case, Peter himself explained in 1 Peter 3.21, corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter is saying that the baptism of water that removed the dirt from flesh, that water baptism cannot save us. The water baptism in Acts 2.38, which he said, is unable to cleanse us and to save us from our sins. What can save us is our appeal to God from a clear conscience through the death and resurrection of Christ. He just said, repent and be baptized. Right after repentance in Acts 38, for public demonstration of repentance and faith in Jesus. For the Israelites publicly and nationally rejected Jesus. They crucified him. Now, is Peter contradicting himself? 
No, he is just going deeper about the doctrine of salvation here, that the water baptism cannot save us, it cannot cleanse us from our sins. Now, there are two popular interpretations with the grammar and word use and meanings uh, of this verse, and these are the two. I found it in the site of Cone's table. You can check this out. But I personally believe that Peter commanded the people to be baptized right after repentance because he wanted the people to show their identity as Christians, faith in Christ, and conversion to the public. Reasons? Because these people rejected Christ publicly. Peter did not want a secret disciple at that time. And third, of course, it is the beginning of the church. And of course, because God commanded them to baptize in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. Now again, Water baptism cannot save, is not a requirement for forgiveness. And in 1 Peter 3 verse 21, Peter explained it, that it cannot save us. Note, this baptism in Acts 2.38 is water baptism. It is clear that it is a water baptism and not baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some assume that this is a baptism of the Holy Spirit because of the statement, be baptized in the name of Jesus. But in Acts Chapter 10, verse 44 to 48, the water baptism there is using this term in the name of Jesus also. Now, in the book of Acts, baptism in the name of Jesus is always water baptism. They just use the term in the name of Jesus to publicly confess that they believe that Jesus is the Christ and that they belong to him and that they identify themselves with him. Water baptism is not a requirement for forgiveness and for salvation. Look at the video links in the description below. In those videos, I discuss the people in the Bible who got saved without undergoing water baptism. Check it out. If God uses this video to bless you, please subscribe and click that notification bell for more Bible updates. Thank you very much for watching. God bless.